most tornadoes fit inside charts, but a few belong in nightmares, fire, lightning, volcanoes, mountains, storms born in places where no human lives long enough. To explain what happened, these aren't EF0 to EF5. These are the seven tornado levels. Science can't scale, nature doesn't repeat, and survival isn't part of the equation. Let's find out. Level 1. Fire Tornado. A normal tornado tears. A fire tornado incinerates. This is the tornado that breaks the rules of both fire and wind. A spinning column of open flame rising hundreds of feet into the air, feeding on oxygen, buildings, forests, and anything alive caught near it. You don't survive a fire tornado. You don't even approach one. By the time you feel the heat, it's already too late. In 2018, California saw something no meteorologist ever wants to witness. The car fire produced a rotating flame column so violent that researchers still refused to assign it a wind speed. The core temperature exceeded 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Steel melted, pavement liquefied, Trees 40 years old turned to ash in seconds. One firefighter, Jeremy Stoke, radioed that he was trapped. He never finished the sentence. The fireinado lifted his fire truck, flipped it, and vaporized the air around him. His radio was found fused. His truck's metal frame curled like paper. There was nothing else left to recover. Fire tornadoes break the EF scale because you cannot measure a funnel. When the funnel melts the instruments, a normal tornado hits you with debris. A firenado hits you with flame hotter than a jet engine, and oxygen so depleted your lungs collapse before the fire reaches you. No warnings, no shelter, only heat, wind, and a rising column that looks alive. Level 1 is simple. You don't outrun the wind. You don't outlive the fire. You vanish between both. Level 2. Volcano Tornado. This isn't a tornado. This is a volcanic tantrum wearing a tornado shape. When a volcano erupts, hot ash rises faster than hurricanes, creating rotating columns that mimic supercells. But instead of rain and dirt, the vortex is made of burning shards of volcanic glass and superheated rock moving faster than bullets. You don't survive that. You don't even breathe near it. Scientists call this phenomenon a volcanic mesocyclone, but they cannot scale it the way they scale tornadoes. Because a tornado inside a volcanic plume is not wind, it is atmosphere that has forgotten what atmosphere means. In 2021, La Palma's eruption birthed a twisting column inside its ash cloud. It rotated with the precision of a tornado and the temperature of hell, anything that entered the funnel. Wildlife, debris, volcanic ejecta was shredded into particles and blasted upward like ammunition. The air alone was lethal superheated, toxic, thick with sulfur and ash, sharp enough to flay skin on contact. No chase team approaches a volcanic tornado. No Doppler radar can survive the heat. No drone lasts more than seconds. Even if you stood a safe distance away, the ash cloud would choke you. The heat would burn you. The shock waves would rupture your lungs. Volcano tornadoes don't leave damage trails. They leave nothing distinguishable, nothing to measure, nothing to classify. This storm kills before the wind arrives, before the science arrives, before the brain registers fear. Level 2 is a tornado fused with geology, and geology always wins. Level 3. Mountain Vortex. This is the tornado that forms where tornadoes should not exist, so high in the atmosphere that oxygen is thin and physics grows uncertain. A mountain vortex doesn't roar, it whispers like a ghost. A rotating column of rarefied air, so unstable that even stepping near it can pull your balance away. Survival is impossible, not because the vortex is violent, but because it forms in places where humans don't survive long anyway. In 2018, hikers on the Himalayas recorded a rotating pillar of ice crystals, over a thousand feet tall, forming on the leeward side of a ridge, where winds accelerated through a natural wind tunnel. The vortex tossed boulders like marbles and lifted snow in a spiraling column that glittered under the sun like powdered diamonds. It was beautiful. It was also a coffin. At altitudes above 18,000 feet, air pressure alone can weaken the body. Add a rotating updraft strong enough to throw rocks and the environment becomes instantly unsurvivable. One climber disappeared inside a vortex near Lotza. His climbing partner reported the snow lifting, their ropes snapping upward, and a brief glimpse of a rotating pillar devouring the ridge like a grinder made of frost and wind. He was never found.
mountain vortices can't be classified because there is no damage trail dash dash, only cliffs, ice, and rock. That already looks destroyed. The EF scale fails here, meteorology fails here, altitude itself becomes the killer. Level 3 isn't loud, it doesn't need to be. At that height, silence itself is deadly. Level 4. Anticyclonic Tornado This is the tornado that breaks the rules of rotation. Northern Hemisphere tornadoes always spin counterclockwise. Always. Except when they don't. Anticyclonic tornadoes rotate clockwise. The wrong direction against the planet and against atmospheric balance. Meteorologists cannot scale them because their damage patterns are backwards, their rotation is unstable, and their lifespans are unpredictable. And when they kill, they kill because no one understands their behavior. In 2012, Oklahoma saw a tornado that defied meteorology. Storm chasers reported a rotation that felt off, a tightening funnel that looked like a reversed mirror of every tornado they had ever seen. The vortex moved sideways, not forward, not along a path, sideways. Buildings weren't torn apart in straight lines. They were twisted backward, shredded opposite the expected direction. People who attempted to flee found debris moving toward them from angles they weren't trained to anticipate. One chaser described the wind as hitting from the front and the back at the same time. When the tornado crossed a highway, drivers panicked and abandoned vehicles. The vortex picked up the cars, spun them clockwise and, and slammed them into guardrails with a precision that felt intentional. Survival? Impossible. Not because the wind was strongest, but because the wind was unpredictable. Storm experts tried assigning an EF value, but the damage indicators didn't match any known pattern. Parts of homes were peeled inward instead of outward. Trees were twisted clockwise. Metal sheeting was found wrapped in spirals. That matched no previous tornado signature. Level 4 is the tornado that spins wrong and kills right. Level 5, multi-vortex hypercell. This is the tornado level that cheats. The one that pretends to be a single monster until you get close enough to realize you're looking at a monster with children. A multi-vortex hypercell doesn't form one funnel. It forms many, dozens sometimes, each one rotating inside the parent tornado, like knives spinning inside a blender. Survival isn't just impossible, it's mathematically impossible. There isn't a safe angle. There isn't a safe distance. There isn't even a safe underground space when the ground itself is being drilled apart by rotating sub-vortices. In 1974, the super outbreak unleashed one of these things. The Zania, Ohio monster. Survivors said it didn't look like a tornado. It looked like the sky was boiling. Black columns twisted inside the main funnel, each one breaking off, slamming into homes and rejoining the parent vortex like soldiers returning to formation. One teacher at Central State University watched separate funnels dance inside the larger one. She described them as thin, violent appendages, striking out at random. A hand with fingers made of wind. A firefighter later said, every time you thought you were out of its path, another funnel tore through a different angle. Homes weren't just destroyed. They were erased from multiple directions at once. The debris lifted upward, then sideways, then downward again. As the smaller vortices took turns tearing at the ruins, cars didn't just fly. They spun around the funnels like moons orbiting a planet. And the sound? People who lived far away said it sounded like every train in the world crashing at the same time. But those who stood closer described something stranger. A low pulsing hum, a vibration so deep, it felt like the sky was breathing. Meteorologists still cannot scale these monsters. One EF rating doesn't work because each subvortex can meet a different category, EF2, EF3, EF5 dash. Inside the same storm within the same minute, you don't survive this because you cannot predict which funnel hits next. You cannot see them all at once. You cannot fight physics. When physics has multiplied its weapons, multi-vortex tornadoes do not kill with wind. They kill with overlap dash dash. Too many directions, too many rotations, too many impacts for the human brain to comprehend. Level 5 is not a tornado, it's a system. A coordinated attack by the atmosphere on everything beneath it. Level 6, electrified tornado. This is the tornado level that carries its own executioner. A tornado wrapped in a continuous lightning column. A rotating plasma cage charged with hundreds of millions of volts striking the ground again and again and again inside the funnel itself, 
Storm chasers call these stovepipe lightning vortices. Scientists don't call them anything because science doesn't have a scale. For a storm that's half tornado, half power plant, the lightning doesn't appear outside the funnel. It appears inside it trapped spiraling upward like a glowing serpent. A regular tornado can fling debris at 150 miles per hour. An electrified tornado heats the air to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit before the debris even touches its target. You don't survive this because you don't die one way, you die two. In 1991, near Fort Smith, Arkansas, storm spotters watched a narrow stovepipe tornado descend with a constant lightning column running through its core. Not streaks, not flashes, a continuous electric spine. Power poles vaporized, transformer boxes didn't explode. They disintegrated. Grass turned to black glass. Metal fencing fused into the soil. Cows were found with no burn marks. Their organs simply stopped overloaded instantly. By electromagnetic discharge, a farmhouse half a mile from the core had its wiring melted inside the walls. While the tornado hadn't even reached the property yet, and worst of all, lightning inside the vortex behaves differently. It jumps sideways. It arcs through objects it shouldn't reach. It spreads across wet ground. For hundreds of feet, there is no shelter from this. Basements become electric traps. Cellars become batteries. Vehicles become coffins on wheels. Meteorologists cannot scale electrified tornadoes because the EF scale is based on wind damage, not electrical annihilation. This level doesn't break buildings. It breaks everything inside them. Level 6 is the storm that doesn't just spin. It glows. It hunts. It charges the very air you breathe. And survival is not an option. Not because of the wind, but because of the current. Level 7. Hypercane Tornado. This is the final level. The theoretical one. The nightmare one. The one scientists pray. The oceans will never become warm enough to form. A hypercane tornado isn't part of a tornado outbreak. It isn't part of a storm system. It is the storm system. A hypercane forms only when ocean temperatures reach 50 degrees Celsius, a threshold Earth has not hit in hundreds of millions of years. If it ever did, a hypercane could rise, taller than hurricanes, stronger than supercells with wind speeds approaching 400 miles per hour, and a central vortex so powerful it could inject moisture directly into the stratosphere. Inside that system, tornadic vortices could form. Not EF5, not EF6, but storms no human has language to describe. This is the ultimate unscalable tornado, the one that breaks both the EF scale and the human imagination. Models predict a vortex so tall it touches the stratosphere, a rotation so violent, the sea beneath it boils, a pressure drop so extreme, lungs would collapse, even in reinforced shelters. Debris wouldn't just fly, it would sandblast anything exposed. At supersonic speed, cities would not be damaged, they would be peeled off the map. Not a single meteorological instrument on the planet could survive long enough to measure it. Humanity would not see the storm. Humanity would see the aftermath. An ocean stripped naked, land permanently reshaped, the atmosphere wounded. A hypercane tornado is not destructive, it is extinction level. Level 7 isn't survival based, because survival is not a factor. You don't survive an event designed by physics to erase shorelines and rewrite coastlines. Level 7 is the end of what a storm can be before it stops being a storm and becomes an era. Science can scale EF0. It can scale EF5. It can scale damage, debris, and wind speed, but it cannot scale. Tornadoes made of fire, tornadoes born inside volcanoes, tornadoes above breathable air, tornadoes rotating backward, tornadoes containing their own children, tornadoes charged with lightning, or tornadoes powerful enough to rewrite the planet. Because when the sky decides to break its own rules, you don't scale it, you don't study it, you don't chase it, you just hope it stays far enough away that it never learns your name.